Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to model a computer mouse that is as smooth and round like this one in Shaper 3D. In this episode I will focus on working a lot with curved networks which is kind of like what you see here. We have various profiles and various rails and then we can loft this into this beautifully fluid shape. I will then also talk about creating all the sketches to create then all these individual details, for example, the buttons, the scroll wheel, everything is done and demonstrated in very simplistic yet very effective uh, methods because you want to work smart, not necessarily hard. And then in the end, we will bring everything into the visualization tool to create a really nice product presentation. As always, um, this episode is filled with a lot of modeling and sketching tips and tricks. And with all that said, let's get going. Before we get started, let's make sure our units are set to millimeters and our snapping system is turned on. We're in top view. We'll create a sketch from the top, one line up, one line down, one line to the left. We lock this point all three lines we want to be horizontally vertically constrained. The distance between these two points is 80. To make sure these two lines are the same, we give them an equal constraint. And then 45 millimeters for this. This is kind of like a triangular base for the back arc. So back to sketch, spline, we will use the control point. We start drawing from the top press, go to the bottom, press, and stop there. And then these two points, I can move over. Very nice. Cool. Then I will draw somewhere here a line, because I know this is later where I will be at the end. And then I draw my midline. And I will undo this one more step and draw this line a little bit cricket because I would like to show you something. This line was drawn to the midpoint. It's glued to the midpoint. So this now I can make horizontally and this I can make vertically constrained. You see, this will be 70 millimeters and this will be 60 millimeters. Very good. Okay, so that's the easiest way how to draw a line at to a midpoint of another line. We now would like to create our rails. So sketch, spline, start drawing there, click and start drawing, click and end. Then the splines need to get a tangency constraint. And with that, what I can do is check this out. I'm actually very nicely adjusting the flow of my, yeah, all three splines. I would like this to be symmetrical. So I draw myself a nicely centered line, select a pair of CVs and add a symmetry constraint to this line. So this cuts down a lot of the work and make sure everything is also symmetrical and perfect. If this back here should really be 45, here's a little trick. I remove the constraint for the length, snap the line onto the spline, and then I change the line to 45. You see, easy. This line was actually only a helper, so I will delete this line now. Very good. As another tip, I can also lock this, make this horizontal, and then I give a dimension to these points, by the way, just so you know. The main reason is when we do a loft, we want this to be a nice and uh, solid piece. For example, here you see we have two halves. So we have the start, we have the rails left, right, and now we need to do the front part. So on top view, sketch, I will draw here a line plus minus of 17 millimeters, horizontally, vertically constrained as a reference. And then I go to the spline and I start the drawing. Press, press, go horizontal, go over, 
press, press, and down. So I always want to have three points in a corner. Now here's a very important step. We don't add dimensions or anything to it. We will now actually rotate the whole sketch. I leave the sketch edit mode, move the 3D widget to this axis, and then rotate this by 45 degrees. Then I can rotate my view, select the sketch profile, finger double tap, and now we will constrain it. This line should move, so we lock it. And also here, this line, I move to there, and then this I move down, little trick again, lock. This should be vertically, horizontally, point to this line, 17. See, easy. Now, I would like to have the left and the right side to be symmetrical. So also here, we add the symmetry constraints. So in this case, really, we want to do this because we have so many points. Aligning them by hand is way too much work. To make sure that these points are all exactly the way how I want, so I can use, for example, the grid to snap them. I can also, as a little trick, draw two lines. Each line is equal and horizontally, vertically constrained. Five millimeters. And then all I need to make sure is that this is, for example, also on this ray. And it is. Very good. I can keep it there. Or I can also remove those. The points were not perfectly positioned. It's a small geometry trick. Now we have the start and end. We have the side rails. We need the center rail. So we go to side view. Go to sketch, spline. We have nicely our snapping intersection points. So there and there. So we draw one up, one over and to the end. Where the fingers are, fingertips, we want the mouse to be more flat. Where the mouse starts, where the palm is, we want this to be more rounded. The height is around at its highest point, 42 millimeters. So here we can draw a line as a reference, 42. There. And delete this line. We don't need it. Very good. Really important is you see that this spline starts and ends on this plane. Check out what we can do now. Profiles, rails, and loft. Pretty cool, huh? It's beautiful. From here, this is not necessarily really the rounded shape I want, so we need another section in between. So this body we delete. Somewhere here, I would like to have kind of like another sketch. So I will select this spline, close, add plane, and then this I move somewhere to that position. There, delete this line, select the construction plane with a finger, double tap, zoom out. Now we will switch the spline to the fit point. So from there to there to there. Then we can make the top flatter. You see, however, how here and there this changes a little bit. So we also have their control handles. We can pull out, move up and down. To make this perfectly even, here is a little trick. There's a line, a lock. Then I draw a line up, a line over, a line down. Very good. These lines should be horizontally, vertically constrained. Select this. Oh, look at that. I can select this point and snap it to there. So this way I make sure the handles are left and right perfectly the same. Now with this, um, I can move this up or down and hide everything a little bit. Straighten this. This is good. And then at the end, we can delete those. Yeah, because the these vertical handles, the way I drew them, is exactly the way how I want them. So now let's try this out.
there. Ah, oh, it's really nice. Very good. The sides are more flat. And then here, this is nice and roundish. Very good. So at this point, it might make sense to select all our sketch elements and put them into a folder. Also give objects names, really makes sense. And then this folder we can hide. Very nice. At this point now it makes sense to model the buttons. I can go to a top view, go to sketch, spline, change this to control point. And somewhat here in front, I just start drawing a sketch somewhat like this. Okay. Rotate 3D view, select the sketch, close, and then I move this one up and bring it over. Very nice. Go to top view, very good. Kind of like to there. Then I can select these points, bring this over, move this in and out. Now I don't really know, yeah, where is everything now? So I will go back. One more time, go to line. You see here, I draw it in a line. And these two points were still drawn in a way, so they were lined up to the sketch. And this helps me now to draw another line. And you see, it's lined up to the sketch grid. Okay, so this line goes. This line I will lock because this is my symmetry line. And then I do the same here again. So with this, now I can move this around and really nicely kind of like explore the shape and proportions of my buttons. That's more the outline. Very good. Let's see how this looks. Select this spline, select the two top surfaces, more, project, and make sure we have all the surfaces as the target. We imprint uh, as body edges. There we are. Yeah, these are my buttons. Very good. Perfect. So hide the sketch folder. This now we can push down two millimeters. So we created the cavity where the buttons should go in. How do we model actually the buttons? That's very easy. So I will hide this body and make myself this body one more time. There we are, very good. And then this body, I can call button. Very good. So what we will do now is we will, from this button body, we will remove the volume of the mouse body via the subtract command. And we want to have the remove bodies turned on. Cool, there we are. You see, that's how easy it is. Okay, now time to refine actually the buttons. We will shrink this by half a millimeter. We also need to split actually this big button into two. So what's the easiest way? We have here this center line. This center line we can select and then outside the sketch mode, we can add a plane. And then this plane, we can rotate 90 degrees. Okay. And then this button, we select this plane, split body. There we are. Very nice. This plane, we can now move into the sketch folder. I select this button, isolate it. Rotate my view to this inside face and then shrink it by minus 0 0.25. And then you have to do the same to here, minus 0.25. Let's take a look at how everything looks together with the mouse. This is actually pretty good. Very nice. Here, we want this surface actually to go further down, minus one. We need to have a little bit of space for the buttons to move up and down. 
that's it. Very good. At this point now, with the buttons kind of like in place, it makes sense to create the scroll wheel. So do a side view. Let's go to sketch, circle. Somewhere we can create the circle, 22 millimeters is good. Bring this one down. The midpoint should be way under the mouse surface. Question now is left and right. Where would we like this to be positioned? Should not be too too far uh, uh, away from your fingertips. Very good. So this sketch I will select isolate and I will give this an offset by four and here an offset four. So I extruded left and right this by four millimeters. Check this out. Select this whole thing. Make a copy. Don't move it. Select the outside. 23 millimeters. I made this bigger. And then I select the inside. Make this seven. And this I make six. So I'm shrinking the whole piece. And then these two elements I join together. That is how easy you can create a structure like this. Let's round this a little bit. Very good. And here, these edges, we round to 0.5. So this is kind of like the plastic part, and this is the rubber part later where our fingers move over. An isolate. Well, we need to create also an opening for the button going through the, uh, an opening for the scroll wheel to go through the two buttons. So maybe we can give this also a name. There we are. Now let's hide this. We can select this sketch isolated. So we know we did this by four. We did this by four. Four. Okay, so this is now eight. Um, what about 8.5? So half a millimeter left, nine, half a millimeter on the other side. We set this to 23. What about 24? Okay, very good. So you see why I built this a little bit bigger. And then from these two buttons, we will remove this. And do not keep. Yeah, this is perfect. Very good. Let's take a look at the scroll wheel. This all feels really good. At this point here, we can select these edges and pre-round them a little bit. Yeah, this is very good. And here too. Very good. So buttons are done, scroll wheel is done, mouse is done. Next piece would be the cavities left and right side for the thumb and the pinky. So we go to a side view, sketch, and then draw a line. Somewhat to the right side, you see it goes down, on the left it's higher. On this line, we will add a plane. This plane now we can select, move the 3D widget so it automatically rotates, and then we rotate the whole plane 90 degrees, remove the line, select this plane, finger double tap, zoom out, and then section view. Look at that. Now we can see where actually this plane would slice through here. What we need to do is we need to create somewhat here a sketch that looks like this. And here we create a sketch that looks like this. They can be somewhat a little bit different. That's okay. Don't have to be the same. Here this really cuts more through the 
back part. This cuts maybe more through the front part. Because you need to keep in mind where's your thumb and where's your pinky on the mouse body. And this may be a tick further away and a tick closer. Very good. Okay. Now leave the section view. We select the sketch and then add a construction plane. Kind of like there. So what we do now is we select this plane, finger double tap, section cut, and now we can create here a nice arc, something like this. To get the shape correct might require a little bit of experimentation. So I have this profile selected and then this path and I sweep this along. And what is important, what I want to make sure is here it does not cut through it and it doesn't. And here it cuts through really well. Very good. So now I can select my mouse, select this piece, subtract and cut this away. And look at that. This is how you do this detail. It's so easy. These elements I move to the sketch folder, hide it. This looks actually pretty nice. This is maybe a tick too high. So what can we do? We could rebuild the sketch or we could shrink this a little bit. Move this down a little bit. Welcome to direct modeling with Shaper. There we are. Fantastic. Done. Next site. So here. Same process, we select the sketch, add plane, bring this over, there we are, double tap, and then this is only for the pinky, pinky is smaller, doesn't need so much. Sweep. Very good, yeah. Those are nice. So they're really noticeably different. Very good. Bring this over. There we are. So what we can do now at this point is actually adding details. So this edge and this edge. I would like to fill it. Rounding of two is good. This edge here, I will round a lot too. So the mouse slides really nicely forward. Very good. We pre-rounded these edges there. And I will do the same, just a little bit with those edges, 0.5. Because then I can select these corners and round those actually two but before i do this i want these edges here to be rounded by one millimeter you need to be careful about the distance here how much space you have so one millimeter is actually really good that's very safe so this i should now be able to fill it easily i pre-select only a few edges 0.25, there we are. Then here, these edges, 0.252. These create really nice roundings, something that will be noticeable when we put the model into the visualization tool because filleted edges create nice highlights. And this is something I would only do really at the end. This all looks really good. Yeah, perfect. That's a really nice model. Look how beautifully smooth everything is. So let's bring everything to the visualization tool. There we are. We would like to give the design a main material being this LMI. So I'll just drag it onto it. Drawing it onto a body, adds it to every face. Then I can go here to use materials. 
And this I have here a material color already selected. I overwrite the material color. There we are. Nice, no? The button and here the wheel I will hide because this, this, and in these two faces, I would like to give a different color for this melamine, this brighter one. Check out what happens when I click done. You see now we have two materials added. And then, so the first material got copied. I made a, and then I just color adjusted. Really nice. Here I will select these faces. and give those change a chrome look. There, this looks really nice. Very good. Then we can show all our pieces here. Now this surface, this and this, that should be a nice sticky material. So we will use the matte synthetic rubber. Back. Then we can also here adjust the material. Don't use the pitch black or pitch white. These materials don't really exist. We can't produce them in real life. So I was always use something that's a little bit darker or um, than, than white or a little bit brighter than RGB pitch black and white. Also here, these two uh, sides, we will give this material to. Oh, look at this. This looks really nice. Look at that highlight. Very good. Okay, so this is basically all that's important to know about materials. Let me show you now how we can set up the environment. Now we have four different modes here, default, transparent, colored, and a gradient. What's really interesting about to know about transparent and colored is you see how with the colored, the reflection here, is colorized. So if you know that your product will be put onto your colored uh, background inside your lighting program, do this already with the color inside the application here. With this uh, gradient, this looks actually really nice. We can then go and edit, change for example, the position of the light and then really pay attention to how can we create a really nice reflections on this design, work with the shadows, etc. Move our view. Talking about views, we also can work with the top view, side view, etc. Uh, and also the we have an orthographic view, which would be kind of like this. Or we go to the perspective view when we are inside the perspective view actually. You see how this changes. So this is a rather very boring, but easy to create two-dimensional views, uh, perspective view, more orthographic view, more correctly speaking. And with the perspective uh, ability, we can create then really nice dramatic looks. Like this. And then to create a nice image, we just click on capture upper left corner. And that's it.